Hello, my name is Sean from EP Training Services. One of our newest videos today, this one is about ADR training. So if you are moving dangerous goods by road uh, and you come into scope, which we'll talk about in a moment, then the driver will need a vocational training certificate, what we call an ADR, an ADR license. So this is a European agreement, not to do with uh, us leaving the EU because it's a United Nations agreement is ADR. So it's transferable within other European states. But basically ADR is an agreement that says if you're gonna transport dangerous goods by road, uh, your drivers must be suitably trained and qualified. So from a driver's point of view, and in most instances, yeah, it will be HGV drivers uh, if they move dangerous goods that will require ADR. But sometimes you can have a smaller vehicle as a motorbike, for example, because uh, they might move class seven radioactives, which is a dangerous substance, but it's tiny. So in the main, it is the HGV drivers uh, that go for an ADR certificate. So ADR, it lasts five years. Um, how do you get it? You have to attend classroom sessions and you have to sit examinations. As far as what type of ADR you do, well, that kind of depends on what classes of dangerous goods you're gonna move. Anybody, okay, who's doing an ADR course, we're gonna go through this, will have to do some uh, basic modules um, compulsory modules in order to get their ADR. So when you do an ADR course, yeah, you can do them online. The best way to do it is in the classroom. Why? Because there are examinations and online, it doesn't really work as well as on the classroom. But let's say you book yourself in for a classroom course and they normally start on a Monday. On the Monday, you'll be doing a thing called call. The core module. Now, everybody needs one of these. Whatever class you're going to be moving, in whatever form of transport, uh, everybody has to do the core element. And that will last only all day Monday and the morning of day two, so about one and a half days. The ADR core will cover things like what to do in an emergency, some basic first aid, uh, fire precautions, that kind of stuff. So everybody, if you're going to do an ADR, you've got to do the core. That's one and a half days in duration. Normally then on a Tuesday afternoon, you'll do a thing called package, package element. Now the packages, that's half a day. You're going to need that element if you're going to move dangerous goods in anything other than tankers. So box vehicles, curtain siders, that kind of thing. So you've done the core and the packages that take up um, the first two days. And then you do the classes. So under UNADR, there is a total of um, nine classes and we're gonna list these now. So class one, that's your explosives, things that go bang. Class two, this is your gases element, okay? And class three, flammables, flammable liquids. Nearly forgot where I was then. Class four is flammable again, but this time it's on the solids. Class five, that's oxidizing substances. Should have changed pen. Class six, that's your toxic, okay? And then we have class seven, your radioactives. Class eight, which is your corrosives. And class nine, we call that miscellaneous substances. As far as what classes you tend to do on these ones, you will find that when you do your ADR course, 
normally the Monday to Thursday or even Friday if you're doing tankers as well. You won't do explosives. You also won't do radioactives. The reason you don't do class one and class seven is they are very niche classes. You will find there's only a small number of companies that will actually move class one explosives or class seven radioactives. You don't need that stuff unless you're gonna be moving that stuff. So unless you need one and seven, you've got a job lined up, I wouldn't bother going for it. So any given ADR training week, you can do the core. Remember, if you're moving goods in anything other than tankers, you can do the packages. And then day three, normally a Wednesday, that's when we spend going through all the classes, except one and seven. So you're talking about two, three, four, five, six, eight, and nine. So as I said, you normally sit in a classroom, you go through the syllabus with your instructor. There are examinations that must be sat. So we've looked at the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, day four, is normally set aside for the examinations. And you do the examinations that you've set the classes for. As far as the examinations go, uh, that's all done through an organisation called the Scottish Qualifications Authority. They're the people that um, manage the whole examination process. So there's two ways to do examinations. You can either do it on paper or you can do it online. By far the best way to do this is to do it online. The reason for that is when you do the test online, you get the results straight away. And with somebody like EP Training Services, the uh, offer we provide is that if you were to fail any elements of the ADR examination, they give you a free reset there and then. So the benefit of doing online is you get the results straight away. Uh, you get the opportunity to reset. You'd also get your ADR a lot quicker than if you did it on paper. If you did it on paper, okay, the papers have to be sent off to Glasgow to be marked, sent down again with the results. That can take anything up to five or six weeks. So if you're gonna do ADR training, make sure you do it with a company that has online testing. It just speeds the whole process up. As far as the examinations go, they are pretty straightforward. And in most cases, there is a lot of common sense that does prevail. The pass mark is about 70%. So for every 10 questions that you uh, sit, you can still fail three and still get the ADR. So I've alluded to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, the examinations. There's another um, module that if you're gonna be moving goods in tankers, that you're gonna need the tanker element. And the tanker element normally follows on after the examinations on the Thursday, all day Friday, and then you do the examination at the, uh, the end of the tanker session. That's how you do a five day course. It depends on what you're gonna move. For example, if you're gonna move infectious substances, clinical weight, stuff like that, then you would do the core, the packages, and the class six. If you were just doing fuel delivery work, for example, heating oils, things like that, and you're using a tanker, again, you do the pour, this time you do the tanker element, and you do class three. Most guys, when, or sorry, most people, when they're gonna do their ADR, they just tend to do the five day. And the reason they do that is your ADR license, your vocational certificate, that is valid for five years. And if you just go for, let's say you're moving um, uh, propane gas, barbecue gas, that kind of thing, we need the core, the packages in class two, that's fine, that's fine. But just remember, you're gonna pigeonhole yourself into that's all you can move for the next five years, uh, gases. Whereas if you did the full ADR, you've got more options as to what you could do further down the line. Another reason why a lot of people do the whole five day 35, you can actually get um, 35 hours counted as driver CPC hours whilst you're doing the ADR. So for example, with someone like a, with uh, EP training, when you do the five day course, you get 28 hours can to watch your driver CPC. Because there's examinations involved, they can't count as driver CPC. So EP's little deal is we give you another seven hours 
driver CPC free of charge. So if you've got to do your driver CPC at some point, and that involves you sitting in the classroom for five days, I always advise try and get another qualification at the same time. And here you go, here's your ADR. So as I mentioned earlier, your ADR license is valid for five years. It's a legal requirement to carry it whilst you're moving those dangerous goods. And we did allude earlier to um, ADR is required for drivers that move dangerous goods that come within scope of ADR, come within scope. So, for example, if I had a jerry can of fuel in the back of my car, that's dangerous substances, but because I'm not moving enough of it, and because it's for private use as well, I would not need ADR. If you are moving goods that don't come within the uh, constraints of ADR, i.e. you're carrying less than, than what is within ADR regulations, you still need to require some formal training about um, hazards associated with dangerous goods awareness. Um, however, the main rule of thumb is if you're gonna be moving dangerous goods, you're gonna need your ADR license. So it's valid for five years in the last fifth year, as long as you have at least six weeks left on your ADR, um, you have the opportunity to renew it. As far as prices go, um, it's anything between 600 and 900 pound, depending on where you go. Um, what else is there to tell you? So that's how long it takes. These are the different elements that you need to uh, sit in or do ADR. You give an idea on the price and also uh, how long it takes. Look, it's not a very difficult examination. Please don't lose any sleep um, over that and worry yourself. There is an app out there you can get actually, which you can download, which has got very similar questions and answers as to what you're gonna get in the examination to help you prepare you. But as long as you pay attention on the course and listen to what the instructor's gonna tell you, you should get through. To give you an idea, for every 100 people that come through our door and do ADR, 97% will pass it first time. So I hope that's given you a little bit of an overview about ADR. Uh, feel free to uh, like or, or, or comment or indeed follow our channel. Thank you for your time today.